he, the project uh, includes uh, parts on China and part on Russia. So our, our working title of the book is uh, A Life in the Sea of Red. Over a different period of time, I have photographed China for, not, for nearly 40 years. And it, it is in these 40 years, China has gone through this uh, pivotal transformation from a from an agricultural rural society to a relatively, um, you know, fully developed uh, economy, and at the same time they they manage to still retain the the authoritarian form of government, uh, in rejecting part of communism by adopting capitalism, whereas in Russia, communism has totally collapsed. So um, the book, trying to, to approach it in a way more humanistically through photographs. In, in the text that I, I dealt with, you know, how much uh, China Im imported the Soviet system. Mm -hmm. At the time, China had to almost so that incorporates, you know, how the Soviets model dealing with arts, dealing with press freedom. There's a great deal of resemblance from the People's Daily to the to the Pravda in Russia, which I saw how it was closed to 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 movies, to film, to mm -hmm. television. Uh, very very similar because at that time, uh, Soviet Union was the only window for China. To learn anything, and the Russian, of course, at the, even at back in the fifty early fifties, were much much more industrialized than than China ever was. Yeah, photography since the the nineties, uh, late nineties, I would say, has suddenly blossomed. I think part of it is that the government also has stepped back, stayed away a little bit, but at the same time, because of the digital technology digital photography. He, enable, he enables more people to do photography. On the one hand, you have a you know, greater number of people participating in photography, in creating works, but at the same time, you still have, have problems with uh, photography criticism in China, for example, and the media is still very much controlled by yeah. the government. So the, the photography criticism on the one hand, they emulate what they see in the West, but they don't really digest it necessarily. That digestive process, I think, is ongoing. It would take a bit of a time um, instead of only emulating what's, what is the Western practice of art photography that, that I think in the days to come, the Chinese photographer will also find their own expression by using the the tools that they have, it's the Chinese kind of changes and revolution, if you say, could call it, is still ongoing. So it, I think the book, I hope, will serve as a, as a, as a, as a kind of a personal uh, collection of photographs. It is a project and I'm very excited to, to show it.